All right. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here with me today, T. Ashley. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Tell the audience your name, where you are from, and what name you write under. Uh, my name is actually Tandrea. I am from Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I write under the name T. Ashley. Very nice. And how did you come up with that pen name? Well, my name is Tandrea, and sometimes people have a hard time pronouncing it, and so I go by T a lot. And then my middle name is Ashley, so it was really simple. <laughs> you, you, but yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. When and why did you begin writing? Um, I would say I started writing at an early age just to express myself. I had a I had a lot of like nice English teachers who always taught us to express ourselves through words. Um, I would say that I really honed in on it probably in, while I was in college. Um, okay. I, took, I took playwriting and I really decided that I liked writing once I took that class. Nice, playwriting. Okay, okay. Now, when did you consider yourself an actress? Um, I feel like... <laughs> Once I finished my first full length play, I'm um, not play, sorry, book that I really considered myself a writer. Like I've had achieved something and I could call myself a writer. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's always an accomplishment to, you know, produce that first book, baby. Now, um, T, do you, are you an independent or are you with a um, publishing company? How did you get into writing? No, I'm definitely, I'm an independent author. Um, I did start with an uh, independent publisher, but um, I decided uh, about a year or so ago that I would try it on my own and okay. have full control of my books. And how are you liking it thus far? It's a lot of work, but I do enjoy it because I can make my own decisions and go with what I want to do. So I, I really enjoy being an indie writer more than being with a publisher. Awesome. I'm happy to hear you're enjoying your experience. Now tell me, what is the name of the book that you're currently promoting and how'd you come up with it? Um, I'm currently promoting Miss Agnes is Missing. Um, I Most of my books come to me in daydreams or like while I'm physically dreaming at night. And I would say that it was, it started in a dream and then it like, then I just sit there and I like think about it all day. And that's how I came up with the, the concept. Awesome. So first, let's just talk about this beautiful cover. Okay. That is just beautiful. I love it. That caught my attention when I was going through um, your various books. And I'm like, okay, I see that melanin popping on that cover. Beautiful, beautiful. How do you come up with the concept for the cover? Um, I actually had saw an ad for a Facebook group for um, book covers, and she had that on her cover, like um, banner. And I was like, that picture is so beautiful. I want it. So I joined her group and I was like, is that available? She's like, yes. And I was like, give it to me. Give it to me now. <laughs> yes. So, jump on it. Yeah. I, well, it's definitely um, eye catching. And um, I'm glad you chose that cover. Now, um, uh, why'd you pick the name Miss Agnes is mi missing? Like, how'd that come about? I it just stuck with me. I always title my books first, I don't know why. Like, um, but at first, I was like, maybe I should change it because it's giving away the plot of the story, but I just couldn't think of anything else to call it. Because, I mean, it's not the full plot of the story, there's other stuff going on, but I it came to me in a dream and I just stuck with it. Well, though it shows the power in dreams, one. Mm -hmm. And two, um, because I've read the book, I don't really think it truly gives away the plot because there's so much going on right. <laughs> within, within the pages of your book that I think that it is perfect because it's like, okay, well, who is Miss Agnes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I like the title and I think it fits perfectly, especially if it's stuck with you. You know, you, if, if, if it was something that was like, I don't know, you him and hawing back and forth, but you know, it definitely fits the, um, with what you were trying to get across. Now, 
um, what inspired you um, to really develop this story? I felt like for me, I just don't see a lot, a, enough of me, of my color in books. And I feel like writing paranormal and things like that, like we need more representation. And um, I just felt drawn to like showing a different side. Like we don't always have to have hood books. We don't always have to, I mean, romance is nice. We should, we have representation in that, but like, I felt like there needed to be more there needs to be more in the paranormal avenue. I mean, there's plenty out there, but there's right. always an avenue for more. Um, I just got the, like I said, it came in a dream and I just felt like really strong pull to show more, you know, like it just doesn't have to be one flat romance story. Yes, and the need for diversity uh, when you're coming up so that you know, you can picture yourself in these types of stories and help with your imagination and not feel like the world is just one shade because, right. you know, that diversity is certainly important. And I thank writers like yourself who um, add to the pot, you know, so that we have more stories and from a, having a narrative from our point of view and not being told by someone else's that may not understand some of the inner workings of people who look like us. Right. So I applaud you for that as well. Thank now, are any of the experiences mentioned in this book, Miss Agnes is Missing, um, based on your life or anyone that you know? No, I don't think so. <laughs> like, nah. I think it's all make believe in my head. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Um, now, was there an ease or a hard part of writing this book? What was the hardest? I would say, because I did a lot of research, especially with um, the Papa Legba um, part of it, I would say just like trying to um, incorporate, thank you, uh, different but true avenue into the book and not just like completely all make-believe because I'm not a researcher. I can't stand research. I don't <laughs> plot or anything like that. So I think that was the hardest part for me in okay. the in the book is like trying to find a part of a culture that I can incorporate into the book. That was true. Okay. Now, what about the easiest part? The easiest part I would say was like, knowing where I wanted the story to go. Like knowing that the plot, that's what, that plot twist was what I wanted it to be. Like that's who Miss Agnes was gonna be to Victoria. Like I had, that was like the easiest part of that, of the story for me. Nice, nice. Now I'm gonna sidetrack from the questions I sent you. Okay. Um, because I would like for you to share um, what happened, cause I came across you from TikTok. And um, one of your posts was like, you needed to take a break. Can you tell us why you needed that break that particular day? Um, somebody anonymously, anonymously uh, messaged me and told me that if I put white people on my covers that I would sell more books. And that it, even now, like saying it, it like tears me up inside because people actually feel that way and think that way. And um, I needed a break. I needed to take a break and a step back from everything and reevaluate and make sure that this was what I want to do. And I know that this is what I want to do because as a young Black female growing up who loves to read, I didn't see a lot of book covers with people that look like me. So it's my goal to have every single book that I release to have someone that looks like me on it. And for somebody to say that and to go out of their way to say that to me, it made me like pause and be like, people really think like this. In the year 2000, and was that last year? 2020, people actually think like this. And it just like, it blew, both blew my mind and it like broke my heart at the same time. Absolutely. And, you know, when I saw it, I myself uh, was teary eyed, like, seriously, like, this is what we're still doing. 
And I made a personal um, promise to myself that, yeah, I'm not going to let that go down. I'm going to do my, my part to try to promote your name and this beautiful color Thank you. and to let people know we need more books like this. And the fact that they went out of their way to say something to you just proves what you're doing is right. And to never, you know, never deter from your path because your path is, yeah, you might, you know, encounter different opinions and, and whatnot and different feedback that doesn't necessarily agree with what you wrote. But the fact that you touched that person that way means that you're doing something. So um, keep doing that. I and I hope that, that you, um, cause I, I do want to ask you, um, I'm, I'm not sure how many people reached out to you after you post that particular um, video. Was it overwhelming or it, did you welcome it? Or are you like, this is too much? Like what happened? It was overwhelming because even this is overwhelming for me. Cause I don't like attention, which is really funny, but, um, the, I welcomed it because I was like, well, maybe this is what the universe, what I need from the universe. So if there was a lot of people, there were a lot of videos, there was a lot of like emails. I, and I was appreciative of every single one. Um, I don't even think, I didn't even say anything on Facebook. I didn't tell my family until much later. My sister was pissed. She got on Facebook and made a post. Like I, I, I didn't share any with much of anybody but TikTok and the response that I got was both overwhelming and welcome. Well, I'm happy that it was a positive response that you received mm -hmm. and that hopefully it helped fortify, you know, your purpose and your path and to continue to put out works um, for people that look like us, especially our youth, because they don't, when I was growing up, I was a, a real, a, a a big reader, an avid reader, but you know, most of the books I had weren't by people that look like me. I still enjoy reading. It didn't stop me from wanting to read, mm -hmm. but it's nice that when, with my children, that they can have those types of books. Definitely. So you're, you're adding to that legacy and that's a beautiful thing. Um, now we're going back to back on track. Uh, did you learn anything from writing Miss Agnes is missing? Um, back to the research thing, like personally or like, like what type of, what do you either, mean? Either, either, however you take the uh, question. <laughs> okay. Well, when I was researching, obviously Victoria and Hunter are cops. So I had to like, you know, people are really like critical when you say things like, detective wise and police wise so I was in my like mommy groups asking like because I know some of the moms were officers like asking questions or whatever so I learned a lot like just from trying to learn about like police procedure mm -hmm. because I also wanted to have like a positive police officer woman African-American who was trying to do right mm -hmm. in a corrupt uh, department Mm -hmm. So, and male, cause Hunter's a man. But, um, so I learned a lot, like, just like that, not every, um, department is trained the same, like training is completely different from one pre precinct to another or cadet school to another, which was really, really interesting to me. So I did, I, I, I learned a lot on that aspect of researching for this book. Absolutely. I can, I can see how that's possible. I, um, was a civilian worker for the Detroit Police Department as a 911 dispatcher. So even considering that, um, you know, how we make a code of call may mm -hmm. be different than how the actual law is written as far as the requirements to, um, you know, what priority level and things like that um, are assigned to a call may differ from how the officer will actually handle the call. Right. So it's not surprising because that's interdepartmental that mm -hmm. it can be, you know, so different um, depending on, you know, what precinct or what jurisdiction that it's all a part of. So I, I, I can see how you would find some, some interesting things <laughs> with that yeah. one. 
Now, is there a message that you would like for your readers to gain after reading Miss Agnes is Missing? Oh my. Um, oh, I thought hard, long and hard about this question when I saw it and I feel like um, that I, I just feel like with Miss Agnes is Missing is okay to be yourself. Mm -hmm. and to be honest and open with other people and to find your truth I would say I don't know <laughs> okay that was a hard question for me um, I, can, I can roll with that because um I think that on multiple levels that question was answered on multiple levels that qu question was answered um you know throughout the book so I can I can see that message Absolutely, absolutely cool. Now, if you had to do it all over again, what is there any part that you would, you know, change of in writing it? I feel like I got a lot of feedback that people were wished it was longer. Mm -hmm. My books are not very long-winded. Like I'm not like a world builder, like all these fantasy novels, or whatever. So I guess there were a few instances where I was like, oh. I guess I could have added a little bit more to the Hunter Victoria like um, give and take, but I feel like it's a good length. But just to please people, I would have made it. I could have made it a little longer. I guess <laughs> you know that's a difficult task to you know kind of say where do I want to end it, and mm -hmm. um, you know are these characters still speaking to me or have they said enough? Yeah. And that's something only that you can really determine. But I can I I can lean toward the consensus. I wish it was just a teeny bit, just just a little bit more. Yeah. However, uh, I was still satisfied. It's a difference between wanting more and just not being satisfied satisfied right. after the read. And that that's when you know it becomes more of a pre a reader's preference versus was this you know did this story truly catch captivate me and do what you set out to do when you wrote it right. and I think that that was accomplished but just for preference yes I could have seen a little bit more <laughs> gotcha. but no but no I, I thoroughly enjoy uh reading Miss Agnes is missing now T please tell us how many books have you written I have written uh four books well, three books and one novella, and then I am featured in a um, in an anthology, and then nice. I've got some more up my sleeve. <laughs> very, very, very nice. Now, out of all those books, the, the the books, the novella, and your feature, what's your favorite? I would say Miss Agnes is missing. Really? You yeah. know, when I was going through your catalog and I'm like, I don't know which one to pick. I don't know which one to pick. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go with this one. So this will be your favorite? This will be my favorite. I feel like it was, there was no, because as I said, for, with Sight Unseen and Sight Undone, I didn't publish Sight Undone with the um, publisher, but with Sight Unseen, there was a lot that I didn't have I wouldn't say I didn't have control over, but was changed, like even down to the title. So I felt like this project itself was mine, mm. you know, and like it was my baby. Not not that the other ones weren't my projects, but this one I had no outside influences on. Like I named it what I named it. I covered it how I wanted to cover it. So this is my favorite. Absolutely. So, you know, it's like it fully embodied you. Mm -hmm. in the essence of tea so you know I I think that I would see how it would be you know your favorite especially transitioning from you know the independent publishing to totally self-publishing because it's a it's a it's a transition and you know some people like it some people don't and I've heard a variety of answers you know to that question but you know it seems that more and more people are loving to have control of their own work. Mm -hmm. No different than, you know, like with the music industry, everybody wants to get signed, everybody wants to get signed. And then this whole social media world changed everything. Yeah. And you can reach so many different people, even, you know, across the ocean, it's not just limited to what's here in your backyard. Right. I think that's one of the things that helps even the independent author, I like to call it featuring the unknown author, 
you know, hit the map and, you know, blow up and become something larger than they thought they would ever be. Mm -hmm. I, I applaud anyone who has the courage to step out on faith and write that book. So very cool. Now, do you plan on releasing um, any other books in the future? Of course, I'm working on something now and hopefully it'll be out in the next two months. I wanted it to be out next month, but <laughs> I, got a, I got a little carried away with other things in life. <laughs> it happens, it happens. That's what life does is it throws mm -hmm. us these curveballs, but that's okay. I, I'm <laughs> gonna check with you and I say, okay, it's two months later, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> cool, now. <laughs> What would you say separates you from other authors in your genre? I, I, um, I don't know. I try to be different. I try not to like do the whole glittery vampire thing. I try not to, not that there's anything wrong with glittery vampires because we all love those glittery vampires. But um, I just try to just stay true to myself, like and tell stories that I would want to read when I was the age when I started to fall in love with books. I mean, not to say that no one else does that too, but I feel like people write to sell books and not to write for somebody to read them, if that makes sense. No, that does make sense. I, I, I understand it. Now, um, you know, for me, I didn't know what to expect with a paranormal contemporary romance book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is this going to be too freaky or too creepy for me? Is it going to have me like, oh my God, I don't even, what is that? You know what I mean? Like one of, one of those feelings, but I didn't have that. Not saying that, I don't know if that's what you wanted. I don't know. But um, what you gave was enough to, for me to be like, oh, I'm so interested. Like what is, like what really is happening? And you know, cause off rip, you catch us, you know, like off guard, like, oh my God. And then it's like, okay, cool. Whew, cause I was worried. Um, so I think that that's, that's a excellent, you know, talent to have, you know, when you consider the topic of paranormal, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get um, with that type of read, but I was pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed it. Now, um, what is your experience with others in the writing community? I feel like everybody's like very, well, the people that I've seen, I've seen it all. Anything can be cliquish. Anything can be um, put you off. But I feel like the people that I surround myself with, obviously, are very receptive and like welcome. Coming. And especially in the TikTok community, which I really love, which I, I just, you know, came upon in the last couple of months, they have, everybody has embraced everybody. Like um, writers that I have become friends with are so helpful and they want to see you succeed because there's room at the table for everyone. I feel like they feel that way. Like it's genuinely we want to see you succeed type mm -hmm. of atmosphere. And that's wonderful when that's the experience because it helps push you further. It helps motivate you to know that, you know, there's a, a whole community of other people like you who yeah. want to, you know, present these works of art because it takes so much time and effort and energy. And sometimes you can start one way and go a totally opposite way after, you know, being halfway done, you're like, I don't know, I'm, that's just not what it's doing anymore. And to have that support or even to say, hey guys, I'm doing this and I just can't figure it out. To be able to get answers and not feel like, oh, you're, I'm doing the work for you type thing. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely awesome. Now, um, out of your writing career currently, do you have any advice for future writers or current writers? I feel like for future writers, a lot of people always ask, well, what do I do? How do I start? You just have to start. Just sit down and start writing your book. There's no right or wrong answer. You're, it's gonna, it may suck to some people, it may not, but it's your words. And that's the most important part is that you just have to start and do it. Um, 
And then for like current writers, I feel like for myself, I have to keep telling myself this to stop looking for validation. Mm -hmm. Um, It's my words and I'm not doing this for anything other than having, being able to say that I did it. I do it for my kids. My daughter loves to read. So I want her to be able to see her face on a book, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm doing it for myself. That's, that's so true. And for the, the first part of, you know, to future writers to um, just do. And um, I was, I was in, did a clubhouse yesterday. And one of the authors who's aspiring was saying how she just didn't know, you know, if people want to read it or, you know, whatever else. And it's like, we can't look at it that way. No different than me running this book club. I'm like, does anybody care what I got to say about a book, <laughs> you know, but you never know and to, you know, stop worrying about that part of it and just to push it out and you never know who you're going to reach, who you're going to help. And that's very important. And on the second end of it, of not looking for the validation, you know, don't get so tied up into the metrics and, oh my goodness, how many views did I get? What's this? But just keep putting out quality work and everything will fall into place what is meant for you will find you yes it will yeah so that's why I'm like you know just keep going no matter what just keep going putting that work out there and you will be surprised how many lives you'll actually touch you know that's that's all part of being human you know finding that purpose and how we're supposed to connect and touch people so awesome 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 Now, we talked about your book. Tell me, because I've been watching some of your TikToks and your reading and stuff like that, so it's funny. (laughs) So tell me, do you have a favorite book of all time? I do, (laughs) and it's The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Book of all time. Like my favorite, I could say my favorite like novel is, um, I always forget the, um, the author. It's called The Rapture of Canaan. Um, it probably was the first book that um, made me fall in love with words. Um, it was written by um, Sherry Reynolds. Uh, but my favorite book that I I like I gift it to everybody. Like if you're going to high school, if you're going, if you graduated from college, I'm gonna gift you this book. And I'm gonna like I, every baby shower I go to, I gift them this book. Like read this to your kid. Like it's my favorite book. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Now, since you picked that book and, you know, I do the whole, uh, you know, what spoke to my soul when I do reviews, what spoke to your soul after reading The Giving Tree? She just kept giving and giving and she didn't have any more to give and she still, like the tree is she, um, she still managed to give him something at the end of his life. And I feel like we take things from for granted so much and then at all oh, it's still there for us even though we've taken advantage of all this and I feel like even become I first read this book like in the seventh grade my mm-hmm. teacher gave it to me when I left her class my history teacher and I feel like as a parent now I get it more yeah. I understand it more like we take and take and take and there's nothing left to give, but it's still going to be there for you in the end. So I think that's what I took most from it. Very powerful words. Mm-hmm. Very powerful. Now, um, I wanted to tell you, uh, because I've been trying to catch any comments that come through and it looks like Kara, the pre maybe? That's my sister, Kara. <laughs> okay, Kara, I apologize. She says she okay. loves so uh, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that she's watching and she loves it. Oh, all right. All right. Now, um, what are you currently reading? Oh, shoot. You know, you see my, my TikToks. I could never remember the title of books. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I'm reading the second book. I'm reading Ken, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer Armand Trout. And it's really interesting. I love it. I just read the first book and it was, it got me out of my reading slump. So I'm really enjoying it. Now, um, explain to us, I I believe it's your husband, correct? He's 
He's my fiance. Fiance. Okay. My your fiance, forever partner. <laughs> your fiance, forever partner, has issues with how you choose to read. He's insane because he reads, <laughs> he uses my Audible account all the time, but he thinks, he says that um, listening to books is not reading, like literally reading, looking at the words, but he uses the Audible all the time. He gets on my nerves. <laughs> I thought that was just the cutest thing because, you know, I think about my, my husband and how he likes to play video games and he'll be like, oh, I have to have this game. And then next thing I know, he's playing something else. And I'm like, but I thought you needed this one. So when I go and get my multiple books, I understand I have several on my shelf that I have not read yet. That's not right. the point. Hey, I, I have to be able to read it. Or like if I'm doing a personal growth read, I might want to listen to it and read along with it or vice versa or put it down it all depends like mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about how I choose to read my books <laughs> right and don't worry that I bought all three versions <laughs> it's okay <laughs> right cool 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 now do you have anything specific you want to say to both your current and your future readers thank you I just feel like I feel humble that people are actually reading my words because I never set out to do that. I mean, it's everybody's goal for people to read books, but my goal was to write them yeah. um, and to put them out there in the world for my kids. But I just wanted to say thank you for taking a chance on me. Um, Cause you know, people are kind of like skittish about reading new authors. Oh yeah. But I just, thank you just I appreciate every one of you wonderful wonderful and your sister also says that he has issues with everything <laughs> but you know T I I am thankful that you was uh, able to come on this platform so that we can hear your voice and understand the importance of your journey and how you're helping so many people know that it's okay to have people on the cover of their books that look just like you. And um, I really, really thank you for the opportunity to even speak with you today. I, I got tears in my eyes. <laughs> so I really do um, appreciate that, that you, you're not stopping. I, I think that's, it would be a crime for you to stop. So thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you and having this platform for us to be able to share our work. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. I love it because I am a total book nerd. Like this is me. I want to talk about books all the time. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. And I love being able to connect with authors because sometimes you're just not able to. And the, the, um, the cool thing about indie authors is that you have the time. <laughs> you know, you can, you know, reach out to the smaller um, platforms and say, hey, check out my work when, you know, some of the major ones don't notice us. So right. thank you for noticing us as well. Yeah. But last thing, how can we stay up to date with T. Ashley? TikTok, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Instagram. Um, my website is authortashley.net. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I don't remember to get on my regular Facebook page. <laughs> my, I mean, my, I'm always on my regular Facebook page with my real name. So I, you can friend me on there. It's Tondrea Mavens. I don't care. I do also have a Facebook page for my author page, but I, uh, you can find me on all major platforms of social media. Awesome. But mostly on TikTok. <laughs> well, that's where I definitely ran across you and was able to see this beauty. And I look forward to reading more of your work. Um, but that's all I really have for you today. I, I certainly do appreciate you. It's been wonderful. And to all my readers, watchers, listeners, however you choose to watch this, as always, Happy reading, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.